think the way that that we look at it, I mean, the the general concept is crypto is really good at, uh, you know, kind of proving uh, a record. It's great at, at establishing provenance of ownership. It's, um, it, you know, and, and allowing that ownership to be highly liquid and exchangeable and tradable. And I think uh, a lot of people years ago, if you remember, like the 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 interest in the space was like, how do you tokenize real estate or how do you tokenize uh, stock in a company or real world things. And I think what NFTs really represent is that the the, the friction um, is pretty high when you cross over into those established kind of jurist, you know, uh, sort of legal um, frameworks. But with intellectual property, especially digital intellectual property, the barriers are super low. And so it's naturally, I think, the first place where you're seeing this really explode. And that obviously is is finding its way in particular kind of creative expression, creative outlets. But it's it's now kind of you know moving into other arenas. So owning moments, owning entitlements, um, owning brands that are attached to entitlements, all these kinds of things that were hard to do are now really easy to do. And so there's just a huge amount of experiment experimentation beyond that. Um, and uh, you know I think I, I don't know if I have it right, Sam, but I think you could buy like a pair of FTX socks that includes a lunch with you or something like that. <laughs> but um, <laughs> something like that, pretty powerful stuff. Um, but <laughs> in, in all seriousness, I, I think um, what we're seeing is just lots and lots of people who are trying to take lots of categories of intellectual property and digital intellectual property and represent that using this kind of methodology. And, uh, and so what we're doing, I mean, basically, I mean, we provide kind of payment and treasury infrastructure for digital currency applications for financial applications. And the, one of the very fastest growing categories is just people building different types of NFT apps, NFT markets, these kinds of things. And we're really just trying to make it really simple and seamless for people to go from the legacy fiat system into actual digital currency so you can transact in these markets and transact with these items. So we're a bit of a arm supplier to all the different people who are trying out lots of different stuff in, in creating um, NFTs. The, the problem that we set out to solve was even when starting the company and then eventually when the technology got to a point where you could actually build something like USDC was how can you build a protocol for dollars on the internet? Um, how can we actually have something akin to being able to have, you know, photos like JPEGs on the internet or music files or streaming video, but actually have a protocol where anyone anywhere connected to the internet can transact with anyone else anywhere um, with the backing of something like a dollar. And um, that technology really only became viable with second generation blockchains um, to, to sort of do it well. And, and that's when we introduced, we started working on it four years ago and introduced it a few years ago. But a lot of people ask, well, what's the use case for this? And my use case is, what's the use case for a dollar? And so I, I, I really think that it's actually gonna have more use cases than existing dollars because you can do more things with a, a digital currency dollar uh, than you can with a, a traditional dollar. You, you know, and we, we see this even today. You see, you know, micro payments for a piece of digital digital intellectual property on a network like an NFT on Solana to people who are using this to settle like billion dollar trades um, and everything in between. And I think, um, you know, there's there's been a bootstrapping of this in the capital markets function of crypto. And so it's been really, really important for people who are trading to have like stable settlement, irreversible settlement around the world. And I think that's that's been really key. And we're just now, as Sam was pointing out, and, and really looking at infrastructure like Solana as well, we're really just now getting to a point where this can now start to be um, connected to everyday payments. And if you have a way to, um, I mean, the USDC on Solana today, as an example, you can settle a transaction in, in milliseconds, uh, you know, several hundred milliseconds. It has throughput to handle like um, real consumer scale applications and at a tiny fraction of a cent. That's incredible. And that's not with a centralized network that's running on a decentralized infrastructure. And so I think we're just now starting to see, and we're seeing this in our own business, you know, mainstream institutions, whether they be financial institutions, fintechs, consumer companies, commerce companies, connecting up to this. And I think that's that's tremendously exciting. And I think I think the timeline of one to two years is right in terms of when this will reach many, many hundreds of millions of people and then eventually billions of people. So I, I think we're, we're making progress. And then, you know, the, the payment utility piece is, is great. And I think our vision has always been that payments is just going to be a commodity free service on the Internet. There's not really going to be a business model in payments in the future. 
it, just like there's not a business model for transmitting data or emails or, or things like that. Those are just commodity free services for everyone. Um, and the real value is going to be once you have hundreds of billions or even trillions of dollars in these stable value digital currencies, that they'll be used in capital allocation, capital markets, they'll be used really, really broadly in a lot of other applications. And so I think part of what we're excited about is um, all these building blocks in um, decentralized capital markets infrastructure, which is what like Serum represents and, 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 uh, and so on, are starting to come online um, and will be you know, ma major, major uses of, of this in the coming years. I think when we got started in 2013, there was like zero regulation. Um, but the, the Treasury Department had basically said, if you're going to sit at the intersection of the banking system and virtual currency, as they called it, you needed to be a money transmitter. Um, so that was the first thing we did is we went out and got licensed in all the states as a money transmitter. It was the sort of first crypto company to get all those licenses. And, and then New York had a special license called the Bit License, and we got the first Bit License. Um, and then, you know, we did the same thing in Europe and, you know, went after an, an e-money issuer license. Um, we also operate a broker dealer and an ATS. So those are a few of the things. I think the, um, you know, the the and then an international entity, a couple of international entities that are licensed as well. Um, but um, uh, you know, I think the big thing is is regulation around like global scale stable coins is definitely a moving target. Um, you know, the the framework for kind of electronic money transmission and stored value money transmission, I think, has been a good one. But clearly. As these go from you know tens of billions to hundreds of billions to potentially trillions of dollars of value, um, banking regulators and national regulators are looking a lot more seriously at it, um, and so that's one of the reasons why um, we're in the process of preparing an application to be a national commercial bank. Um, and uh, but we're interested in in you know full reserve banking, not fractional reserve banking, and and uh, so there's a, a, a journey ahead for us on that. Um, but um, you know I think. You know the, the reality is as these you know get used um, at scale and if other financial institutions want to build on top of this and do that at scale that that structure is definitely going to evolve we think certainly for for uh, you know centrally issued stable coins like USDC um, I think the um, you know and th there are a lot of other major regulatory issues in the space not just related to like payments and banking obviously exchanges and securities and all that fun stuff um, but I, I think that maybe ties in um, you know, we we um, we all know that, um, and referencing you know Kevin's comments as well. There's been a rapidly growing kind of lending and borrowing market in USDC itself, and, and in other crypto assets. Um, but USDC has become um, a really common uh, form of of digital currency to borrow um, and lend, and that's really grown uh, significantly. So we uh, we we have a product which is a yield service. Uh, that's available exclusively to businesses. So we're not offering it to um, retail individuals. Um, but, but our view is that if you're going to offer a product where people are essentially making an investment um, and, uh, and, and you know, getting a, essentially like a fixed income type product, that that's a security. So we, um, we designed and, and launched our yield service as a security. Um, and it's exclusively available to accredited businesses. Uh, and it's offered through a regulatory regime as well, where there's a supervisory framework around it and around the risk management. And I think, you know, for these markets to really take hold and get scale, and if you really want this to be something that is, you know, ultimately growing into tens or hundreds of billions of dollars of borrowing and lending, it, it's going to have to, you know, fit in those in those kinds of models. I think that's somewhat different than than uh, some of the retail products that are out there. Exchanging value is just this ubiquitous commodity free thing and people don't even think about uh, that and things like what Kevin described will be obviously the case. Um, uh, I, I think um, I, I'm really interested in the impact on capital markets and you know the internet has been amazing at creating these multi-sided platforms that create these incredibly like long tails, so long tail markets in advertising and content and media and retail um, and I, I, I think that access to capital um, will be transformed, you know, on internet capital markets. And that will be a, a radically different world than things like NASDAQ or the New York Stock Exchange. Um, but but I, I guess the final comment is just, um, I, I look at this way beyond finance. I mean, I think we this is these are operating systems that are going to really restructure how the basic units of the economy function, corporations, everything else.
Bye. Uh -huh.